Hey everyone, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel, and this is a Starfield shipbuilding. And what we're doing is we are going to be improving the base frontier. Uh, I want to let you know this is we are level seven, and this is between the episodes 12 and 13 of the series. But I want to kind of go over the base or the shipbuilding with you because I've never done it before, and I thought it would be a good time to kind of discuss what the goals were and kind of if you're at the same position about seventh level and I have about 45 grand in caps, caps, go figure, uh, in credits, and you want to improve the, your frontier, what would it look like? What were the kind of the, the thought patterns that I went into with it? So let's just get started and talk hey, to our guy. What can I do for you? I want to view and sure. modify my ships. It? All right, here is the base frontier. This is exactly as you get it in the beginning of the game. So we're going to open up the ship builder and we have two goals in mind. Because of the way the role play is going, I am the character is extremely concerned about caps or credits. So we have about 47,000 and I set a goal that I wanted to spend between 25 and 30,000 credits on this upgrade. And the other goals were pretty much we wanted to increase the cargo capacity and increase the functionality of the ship. If we could get improved weapons in that budget, we were going to do so. But we have to maintain a lot of factors here, and there's going to be things that we need to know about. You know, up here we can see, you know, your lasers, your projectile thrower, your slug thrower, and your missiles, your engine, shields, and gravity drive. And down here at the bottom, you can see all your different factors about the base version of the Frontier. Mobility is fair, not great. Jump range, fair. Cargo, if you're a hoarder like me, that's not nearly enough. Shield, pretty weak, but could be better. Hull is not that strong. So what we need to do is start breaking this apart and taking a look at the individual components and see what we need to improve and what we can improve within our budget. And like I said, about 27,000. So let's start pulling this apart into its individual components and we can see what we got. So those are the landers. We can just kind of group those together, get them out of the way. In the back, we have engines. And we're going to leave those there for right now. But you can see there are Reladyne Dwarf 2000 engines. And we will be keeping those as best we can. In the back, we have the grav drive, the reactor, and this little ballast cargo hold at the bottom. And that's really all of the cargo that we have on this when combined with your cockpit. So the base cockpit has 240, the little ballast in the back here. Uh, it provides five hull and 44 mass. So when I started to think about it, I'm like, okay, where do we go? We're going to need new modules and things. So let's start tearing this apart a little bit further just so we can kind of play with what we got. We're going to push all of our weapon systems up here. So we have the two lasers, the slug thrower, and the missile pod. And we'll take our fuel, kind of place it back there, and just get these things out of the way. And we always are going to need two components, a landing bay and a docking port. So we'll drop that in the back, too. So basically what we have is a reactor. And the reactor is not great, but it's not the worst part about this ship. It's really the grav drive. It only provides grav drive grab jump thrust of 13. When we start adding weight to this, it's going to be really bad. One other component of this, this is a Nova Cowling. This is just a structural unit. It doesn't have any purpose other than providing mounting points or uh, you know, more hull to your, to your ship and make it look cool. So that's kind of an important piece, but not the super important. We could get into cargo, but usually cargo pods are going to be either mounted underneath or on the side. So we need to start looking at 
this first. This is the habitat. We will be looking at this as a Nova Galactic uh, Frontier. This is the basic unique module because if here's the important thing to remember this frontier module is unique to the frontier if you replace it with an all-in-one it will look very similar but different in other words all the little knickknacks and little things that barrett has in there all the pictures of bosco those type of things will be gone in this version so it won't look the same in the interior so if we were to get rid of this it would look a little bit different and i don't mind that because you know my character is not barrett so having all of barrett's knickknacks and things hanging around is kind of weird so we can delete that just by hitting the delete key once it's highlighted and there it goes and we see we made some money back so i wanted to start over and if we hover over this little port in the back of the cockpit we can hit g and we can start adding things. And this is a personal preference, but whether you go with Nova Galactic or Deimos, it's not going to change things dramatically. And what I mean by that is the functions that you have. See, this is a companion way, but we're looking at the two by ones. If you take your arrow keys and go back through, that's the all in one. Go over one to the right. You got an armory. Captain Quarters, Computer Core, Control Station, Infirmary, Living Quarters, Science Lab, and a Workshop. So, the all-in-one berth is going to be kind of the same basic setup. The interior will look a little bit different. But, you can see the price on the Nova Galactic and Deimos is approximately about the same. I'm not going to say it's any different, but you can see it's 1282 for either the Nova Galactic version or the Deimos version. And it's a personal preference after working, kind of seeing the differences and building a few test ships, safes coming and coming back and forth and looking at them. It's about their, it's a personal choice. But the good news is that if you swap them out, the prices will be about the same. So that's not that big of a deal. So we're looking at a two-in-one, and we could have an all-in-one. It has hull, and it has passenger slots. And it really gets down to kind of what you wanted to go with, and just by the interior, the way it looks. And play with it, you know, save scum, see what you want. But I went ahead, and I like the look of the living quarters as being the base. It doesn't have a kitchen, but that's okay. I think it looks like it can hold more passengers, because it has four bunks. So we can go ahead and select that one. And it's going to automatically click it in place. The next thing we want to look at is functionality as far as the different modules we're going to need for production. And sticking with Nova Galactic or Deimos, if we do it on this piece here, we can start stacking. And I played with a couple different things. I thought, well, we can go tall. So we would add a, let's say, a workshop, science lab. Let's just put the science lab on there. And then add on top of that. Well, now we're like three tall. And we're going to have to go by ladder from here to here. As opposed to just staying on one level. And you can see where, yeah, to get that, to get the workshop on there. We'll add that one more. And then we go workshop. She's very tall, she'll be very narrow. And if we do add like the cowling back on there, uh, it's not gonna work because we don't have space for the cowling. We need to put it somewhere up. Let's go up like that, or we can go back down. It'll attach to there, but it won't attach to the one above the cockpit. So it starts looking really weird when we stack. I thought, well, that's not going to work. So, yeah, we'll just leave this over here for right now. Let's think about this. Let's take the workshop, and we'll go down a level. And attach it to the side. Well, we don't want it that far forward. Let's go there. And then take the science lab, and do the same thing, and attach it to there. 
Okay. Yeah. And then we know the interior layout. You go up through the ramp. You go up to the ladder, and you'll end up in the living quarters. And then you just have to walk left to right to get to the different modules. But the living quarters will be in the center. And that makes perfect sense to me. So far, by adding those three modules, we're looking at about 3661. And we deleted one module to get to that point. One of the things we need to worry about is the docking port on the top. We'll just slap that right back where it was, and it needs to be at the top level. You can see, so it can actually attach to ships. And that's why that little indicator on the top there you see, that kind of blue marker, you can't have anything above that. That's your top level. Your docking, or your landing bay, your ramp, always will be at the bottom. So, let's talk about cargo. And there's only... When you look, if you pull the, the rear cargo ballast off, so when you look at the rear ballast, it's only going to attach from the top or the front. So we can't really turn it. See how you can sometimes flip it with Z? There is no flipping with Z. So that dramatically reduces where we can do with this thing. But we'll leave it on the back for right now. We're gonna pull off the grav drive and we can start looking at cargo. There's attaching points there. Let's see what our options are. Hover over the thing, press G. And the only thing that we can attach to those points are weapons. Well, that's gonna limit us a bit. How about the front? Is there anything we can attach to the front that will accommodate cargo? You go up here to reactors, structural, bays, cockpits, dockers. There's no cargo. Okay, well, that's not going to work. How about the top here? Nope. No, you can't attach any cargo to the top. Okay. How about if we go from the bottom side, go over that port right there, press G, reactors, have structural bays, cargo. Okay, so if we attach to the bottom, the only thing we have is the same 100cm ballast cargo hold. Well, that's what we have in the back. Okay, that's a thought. Okay, the obvious thing is what about moving these around? You have different variants. We can go left to right. It's just, that just goes front to back. How about flipping it? Not really. Can't really flip it. But that's only going to go left to right. That's not going to change the variant that we have. We can't attach it to the front and have something like that. We're trying to save money, not add anything new. Okay. So how about cargo on the sides? What are our options there? Okay, we have these little cargo pods. Sometimes very large cargo pods. They will hold 210 on that one. 300 on that, 225 on that, and the mass is 48. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it's 245 cargo on that with mass of 52. That's a lot of mass. Okay, let's take a look at our little cargo pod in the pack here. Mass 44 for 210, and we know it can mount underneath. If we attempted to mount cargo here, let's say this Caravelle 101 is one of the cheaper models. Give us 225. Put that on there. Okay, can we attach? No, we can't attach our landing gear. So where do we put our landing gear now? I don't know. Okay, so we're kind of, kind of stuck. How about if we move this up to there? That's an option. But now, where do we attach our our fuel? Can we attach the fuel anywhere on the top? No, not really. It's it's only a horizontal axis, so that's not going to work. So suddenly, we're we're running out of attachment points here. So we'll just highlight that, move it over here, and we'll delete that. Okay. So what I was thinking is that. 
if we took this, we know it mounts the bottom. And if we control G, we have a duplicate. We can put it in the back like that. But how about if we put it towards the front? There we go. That's kind of what I was thinking. So we'll do that again. Control G and move it. Sometimes the mouse is a little... There we go. And that's how we're getting our cargo. And you can see our cargo went from 450 to 870. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We now know that we can have ports for our, our landing gear. Put those back on. Snap those back, whoops, snap those back in place. And now we have landing gear. So that's kind of how we're looking at where we're getting. We can go to put our cowling back on. There we go. Starting to look like just a fat frontier. But we have a problem. After we put our shield on and our fuel back in place, if we were to attach our grav drive back on, we got we're gonna have errors. And over here on under C on flight check, if we click on that. Unattached modules, we know, because stuff's hanging around. Ship size exceeds maximum length. Ignore that. And I'll tell you why. Because all this stuff is counted into the length of the ship. So all these pieces out here. Need more grab jump thrust. And it's not even going to be able to do the job. So I think we're going to have a problem. And we have reduced mass or add engines to improve mobility. Okay, so that's where we're kind of at at this point. So we can take our grab drive off. We know it's not going to be enough. Let's go ahead and hold off on that and address the low mobility problem. We could add more engines, but where would we put them? Because there's no attaching points here or here. See that? We can't go underneath. But what about under here? That open space behind the cargo pod? How about right there? Hit G. Go through our list. Engine. The M1 engine is an undermount. Let's see if I can change our view here. Pull them out. See how they had their top mount? There is no other option for this. So it can only mount underneath, and that's a perfect spot for this. And that's going to provide a lot of thrust underneath here. So let's uh, control G again. Find a spot. There's the snap. So now we've got the two engines at the top, two engines at the bottom. Okay. Let's check our errors and see where we are. Ship size, we know about that, unattached modules. Okay, the low mobility went away. And our mobility went from 71 to 72 with those two extra engines tacked on the bottom. Okay. So now we have to address the grav drive issue. This is an NG160 grav drive from Nova Galactic. Let's see what we'll attach to the, our reactor. We're going to try and save our reactor because they are expensive. If we tried to replace that, it would be super expensive. So on the back where the old grav drive was, let's just keep with the theme here. We're looking for grav drives. This provides grab jump thrust of 13 with eight power. Okay. Do that again, 13 and eight. We have nine and 12, so that doesn't benefit us. 8 and 13, that's what we already have. The NG170 will give us 9 and 14 for 5,600 credits. Or how about this one? 9 and 16. See how we went up? We're going up a full three extra points of grab jump thrust. And it's not costing us that much more than the, the one for 9 and 14, we're actually getting quite a bit. So I think that's the right one. 
It's going to give us more errors, so we're going to, because we can only have one, but we'll delete this one. And we got two errors. Let's check it. Unattached modules and ship size. Aha, uh -huh. so we're looking good. Our mobility is still the same. Our jump range has not improved, but even though we've increased it dramatically. And that's because we've added so much extra mass here. Cargo is still 870, hull 396. All right, so I want to address the weapons next. She's not looking pretty. We could add things in the front here to try and make it look a little prettier, but I think we're still within budget. We're still at 18, so we still have another roughly 9,000 to spend. I'm never a big fan of these cannons. The weapon cannons do a lot of hull damage, but very little shield damage. And then they're kind of weak, too. And I started to think about it, and when I realized that if I got rid of this, which is weapon 2, weapon 0, weapon 1, weapon 2. This was the ballistics cannon, that's weapon 1, let's say. If I divvied up my power, usually I was running about 3, 3, 2. That's 8. What if I got rid of this and found something else that did more hull damage in, a, in addition to about the same laser damage or shield damage as the 221 MW Pulse laser? Okay, so we're going to delete the slug thrower. Missiles are always good. See, they do a lot of damage. And they're not that expensive. So we can put this back on. We'll go with just two weapon system. But we're going to increase the potential for damage on this. So we're going to control G again, make a copy, and slap it on this other side. So we're still only going to have two weapon systems. It'll be one here and one here. But now the amount of power that we can send to them will be greatly increased. And it'll, it doesn't change the damage when you increase the power, but it changes how fast they will fire. That's an important factor that you can think about. And each one has a weapon max power of three, so that's why you get sick. Once again, the lasers, max power three. So when you double them up, you're getting max power of six for their speed. Okay, we're looking for something that will do more shield and hull damage at the same time, and these aren't cutting it. Let's see what we can find as far as additional weapons. <clears throat> we have a mounting point underneath, a mounting point on each side, so a total of three. So we go here, press G, we can add weapons. I don't think three weapons for the price is going to really help us. I did seriously think about an EM suppressor pulse cannon but we're back to our weight our power distribution I would have to distribute power because I don't haven't changed out our reactor that's not gonna work okay these two lasers were mounted on the sides so let's kind of keep with the design and go for the side here see where our options are you can see the Dragon 221P, that's right there. Three and nine, that's what we had originally. Let's look for something that has a little more hull damage. They weren't doing a lot of, they weren't doing a lot of shield damage anyways, it's three and nine. How about if we go down, we don't want missile launchers. How about a disruptor electron beam? That's 12 and 12. That balances out the two. They'll be firing at a high rate, so we'll be really nailing them at that point. There is another disruptor down here that does 20 and 20, but if we need two, that's 10,000. Our budget is, is already getting close. So I think sticking with 12 and 12 at this medium price build was the right way to go. So we'll use the disruptor 3300 electron beam. Max power 3, hull 2, 12 and 12 on your hull and shield damage. So we'll do that. Fire rate's not too bad. If you compare it to the P laser, fire rate's 6.65 versus 
3.49. So it's going to fire a lot slower, but total damage has gone from a total of 12 to 24. I think that's a good price and at 21.37. So we'll do that. And we'll copy it over and put it right here. And we will delete these two. Okay. Let's check our errors. See what we got. These are weapon assignment issues. And we can fix those. Go over to weapons. And we start assigning the weapons. The first one is going to be our left mouse button. And we are going to go to the electron beam. The right mouse button will now be the missile launcher. And we'll have an unassigned third weapon. Okay. 24,523. So we've come way under budget. We could add more if we clicked on here and just see what we can add to this. Probably will just be structural because we can't have more things like bays or cockpits or anything. We'd only have one cockpit on each ship. We're trying to save money. So yeah, the only thing we got is basically structural thing. But as you can see, everything is going to add more and more weight. We're already pushing our weight by not having an improved reactor. So I think we're just going to go without. It's going to be a little bit ugly in the phase to begin with, but that's okay. And now we've got two, le two beam weapons that do 12 and 12. So that's a total of 24 damage from each cannon, so it's a total of 48. We've dou effectively doubled our firepower in the number one weapon, and we can assign more power to it than we did before because it's not being split with the projectile thrower. And now the weapon, the missiles, will have double as well. So that's 47 and 47 per. So that's a lot. <laughs> And it's going to be have more power total since we can divert power to the weaponry much more often. And uh, we're looking pretty good. Um, top speed 150 has not changed. Mobility's improved to 72. Cargo's improved to 70. And hull's improved to 398. And our weapon and damage here, you can see particle beams 24 and missiles 94. So that's pretty good. I'm fairly happy with that. Um, and we did come in under budget because we said 25 to 27. Like I said, not the best looker in the world. Now, if you want to refer back to what the what it looks like at the inside in episode 12, I do go in and take a look around. But I think this looks pretty good. I'm I'm somewhat happy with this as a budget build. Our character doesn't want to spend the money, but we did get everything we needed. We got almost double our cargo space we went from 450 to 870 we've now got workshops and a science lab so we can do everything on the ship now we can build components we can improve our gear we can do sciencey type things we can carry some passengers if we absolutely need to uh, next upgrades are going to have to be shield and probably reactor this reactor is a little weak. We can do better, but they're pretty expensive. So I think that's probably going to be our next upgrade for this. But for a budget build for 24, 523, we did pretty good. We achieved our goals of more cargo, more functionality, and a little bit better punch on your weaponry. So that's looking pretty good. I hope you're enjoying the Let's Play series, and uh, that's kind of how I my decision making on how I got to this ship. So that's all I got for now. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel and I'm signing off.